Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, October 19th, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Republican senators demand answers about Hunter Biden. Nancy Pelosi gives the GOP 48 hours to reach a COVID stimulus deal. The next debate moderator faces scrutiny over ties to Democrats. San Francisco moves to change the inappropriate names for dozens of buildings, including Abraham Lincoln. Also ahead, how did the corporate media become so liberal? But first, the Senate Committee on Homeland Security calling on the FBI to investigate recently released emails from a laptop owned by Hunter Biden. The information published by the New York Post last week allegedly shows Hunter arranging meetings between his father and a Ukrainian businessman. It is very doubtful the FBI will get involved, even though it should. Speaker Pelosi is setting a 48-hour deadline for both parties to reach an agreement on another pandemic relief bill. She's threatening to pull the plug on all future talks until after the election if Democrats and Republicans cannot strike a deal this week. Biggest differences include billions in spending for child care, unemployment insurance, and the Green New Deal, things that have nothing to do with COVID. The NBC News moderator for Thursday night's presidential debate facing new questions over her liberal resume. Kristen Welker and her family routinely donate to the Democratic Party. In 2016, she was exposed on live TV for giving Hillary Clinton's team a question before her post-debate interview. More on the leftist press in my new column posted on BillOReilly.com. The moderator for the canceled second debate is now suspended from C-SPAN. Steve Scully admitting he lied after firing off a tweet about Donald Trump before the event, asking a never-Trumper for advice. Officials in San Francisco announcing their plan to rebrand 44 schools because current names have an inappropriate connection with slavery, racism, and misogyny. The list of banned historical figures could include Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Teddy Roosevelt, and Thomas Jefferson. This kind of insanity is spreading. In a moment, the national press has allied itself with the Biden campaign. How on earth could that happen? Right back. Well, I got a crash course in home title theft. I hope you pray this crime never happens to you. It can ruin you financially. Here's how easy it is. The legal titles to our homes are digitized and kept on government and business servers in the cloud. A cyber thief hacks these to find your home's title, forges your signature on a quitclaim deed, stating you sold your home. Then loans are taken out against your home until all your equity is gone and you're in debt. You will not know until the collection calls start pouring in. Insurance, banks, common identity theft programs will not protect you. Home Title Lock protects you and puts a barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect tampering, they shut it down. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you are already a victim. Then use code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. Code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update. Message of the day, the corporate media is corrupt. President Trump and everyone else knew that the NBC Town Hall exposition last week would be contentious, and that the ABC town hall with Joe Biden broadcast at the same time would be gentle. And that's exactly what happened. The NBC moderator, Savannah Guthrie, was under heavy pressure to make Donald Trump squirm. The left had battered NBC for daring to put the president up against Mr. Biden. Apparently, they feared Trump would get higher ratings than Biden. So Savannah spent almost all her interview time on the liberal attack line. Why the president doesn't promote masks, his taxes, white supremacy, QAnon, the usual greatest hits. Meantime, George Stephanopoulos, an avowed liberal Democrat and chief correspondent at ABC News, 
did not even ask Joe Biden about the biggest political story in America, the exposure of his son Hunter as a person who used his father's political power to make millions of dollars. George, of course, knew he would look weak not asking about Hunter, but his bosses at Disney, which owns ABC, want Biden to win the election. So the fix was in. That is the state of the corporate media in America today. The question is, how did the national press become a political entity? Why have standards of journalism collapsed? The short answer is Donald Trump. Many press chieftains despise the president because they see him as a vulgarian who panders to conservatives. Therefore, they are directing their power to remove him from office, not responsibly seek the truth about his administration. The long answer is the media culture. Some years ago, Bernard Goldberg wrote a book about CBS News called Bias that credibly reports the left-wing slant of that organization an outfit that employed Bernie for more than 20 years. Now, I worked for CBS for three years and saw what Bernie saw, an organization that valued a liberal point of view. At the time, there was some discipline at CBS News, so left-wing bias was tamped down on the air, especially in local news where little political spin existed. But the Dan Rather crew was very liberal and hired many like-minded people. The same culture was in place at NBC News under Tom Brokaw and at ABC News starring Peter Jennings. I worked at ABC for two years and knew Mr. Jennings well. He was a social liberal, but not aggressively left. Generally speaking, the managers who did the hiring at all the networks were looking for journalists who would fit in. Thus, most network news employees were men and women of the left. President Reagan was not widely admired in the halls of the three networks, but again, ideological reporting was kept under control back then, with exceptions like Sam Donaldson. The harsh truth today is that most corporate news agencies have openly allied with the Democratic Party. So President Trump is not only running against a political organization, the Democrats, but also against companies that literally have billions of dollars and thousands of employees lined up to defeat him. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approved that message by writing it. In a moment, something you might not know. Investors, are you seeking steady cash flow, ready to diversify? Have you considered a proven real estate investment fund? NRIA is one of the nation's leading realty specialists and offers 10% annualized monthly payouts, with bonuses targeted to 21%. That's right, you could receive steady 10% return monthly payments with bonuses. You know, they specialize in realty investing done right. Even use your 401k or IRA to invest. NRIA's 15-year track record and $1.2 billion in new construction development backs you. So learn how you can invest in this hard asset real estate cash flow fund today and receive 10% annualized monthly payouts with bonuses. This is something savvy investors should research and consider. Please call now, 201-210-2727, 201-210-2727, or visit nria.net. An offer to buy or sell any security is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. National is a real estate development firm. See us at nria.net. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Recent surveys from Gallup show the majority of Americans still refuse to fly until doctors develop a COVID vaccine. Air travel down 70% since January. But folks are returning to the great outdoors, as they say, in record numbers. Campsites, RV rentals up 200% during the pandemic. But if you're heading into the woods this fall, beware. You may brush up against the biggest land predator in North America, the bear. From Alaska to Southern Texas, there are three types of bears in North America. The most popular is the black bear. You can find that animal in 40 states. The predators typically weigh about 300 pounds and live for 20 years. The species is also the most agile. The animal can turn doorknobs, unscrew jars of food, even open zippers. 
There are more than 900,000 black bears in the continental USA. Next, the brown bear, better known as the grizzly. Before Europeans arrived in North America, grizzlies existed in most Western states. Today, they live in Alaska, Canada, and some parts of Montana and Wyoming. There are 55,000 grizzlies in the wild, typically weighing 700 pounds. The last bear is also the most dangerous, the polar bear. In the USA, the animal can be seen only in northern Alaska. The predator can grow up to nine feet and weigh 1,500 pounds. Human expansion into the Arctic has sparked a growing conflict between the bears and men. There are typically 20 direct attacks on human beings from polar bears every year. And here's something else you might not know. After human beings, the bear is considered the second smartest land animal in North America. They have the largest brains, can remember food hotspots for 10 years and hide effectively to avoid hunters. Grizzlies even camouflage their scent by rolling around in wild herbs in order to sneak up on their prey. And one more thing, bears are fast. You cannot outrun them. So be very careful if you are walking in the woods. Back after this. There are thousands of abandoned animals in the USA that need our help. I am partnering with Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. Founded by actor Leo Grillo, who left Hollywood to devote his life to saving abandoned animals, Delta Animal Sanctuary is a -a one-of-a-kind rescue unit. They are staffed by trained attendants who look after each animal, providing them water, treats, toys, and affection. Support Delta Rescue and put your legacy to work. Each life-saving gift helps Delta fulfill their mandate to rescue and care for animals. Request a free estate planning package at deltarescue.org forward slash bill. For a limited time, please watch The Rescuer for free only at deltarescue.org forward slash bill. The Rescuer is an award-winning documentary about Grillo's two-year rescue of a family of 21 dogs abandoned in the wilderness. DeltaRescue.org forward slash Bill. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.